Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the first video in a three-part training series on macros and VBA. You might have seen my friend Andy in some of my other videos and he's back. Andy loves Excel and he's learning more and more every day. As his skills are improving, he is also facing some challenges. Andy's boss has realized how good he is at Excel and has been piling on the projects. Andy enjoys the added responsibility, knowing that it will help him grow in his career, but he doesn't know how he will find the time to do all these tasks, and it's stressing him out a bit. Andy also gets bored doing the same repetitive tasks over and over again, and he knows it's a waste of time. He wants a way to automate some of these processes so he can spend more time on the fun and creative parts of his job. What Andy needs is to learn macros in VBA. In this video series, we are going to start with the basics of writing our first macro. VBA is the programming language we use to write macros, and I'm going to explain how we use VBA to program the objects in Excel. We are then going to help Andy automate some common tasks. This includes writing a macro to create a summary sheet of all the worksheets in the workbook. And we're going to build this user form to export sheets to individual files. This is going to save Andy a ton of time every month, and he is stoked. If you have used the macro recorder before, or copied code from the web, then this series will help you get a better understanding of what all that code means and how you can write your own. This will get you ready to develop more advanced applications and add-ins in Excel. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create our first macro. And uh, one thing I want to point out is that I am using Excel 2013 for this video, but you can use any of these versions of Excel. They all have VBA included with them. So the first thing I'm going to do here is save this as a macro enabled workbook. I can just go File, Save As, or I can hit F12 on the keyboard, and that'll bring up the Save As dialog here. And so in this Save As Type dropdown, I want to choose this uh, macro enabled workbook. Workbook, this .xlsm extension. You'll see that's changed the extension here of the file name, and then we can just quickly rename this. We're going to call it uh, My First Macro, something like that. And then you can hit the Save button or the Enter key. Now, once we've saved this as a macro-enabled workbook, we can open the VB editor and start adding some code. So the quickest way to do that, the keyboard shortcut is Alt F11. So hold down the Alt key and press the F11 key. On the Mac, that's uh, Function Option F11. So now that we're in the VB editor here, I'll just give you a quick overview of the VB editor. You'll see on the left side here is the project window. And this is, lists all the workbooks that I currently have open on the computer. So you see I have the tab hound add-in workbook here. This is the workbook we're currently working in, the My First Macro. And then I also have my personal macro workbook here. And then you'll also see that uh, within this macro workbook here, I have a folder that shows all the sheet objects here. So currently this uh, workbook only has one sheet and you can see the sheet objects here. So we want to insert a code module into our workbook so we can start adding some macros and some code. So to do that, you can go to the insert tab on the ribbon and choose module here. There's other ways to do that. You can also do it from this little button here and you can also right click here and choose insert module. Keyboard shortcut is Alt I M. But basically that adds this modules folder here in our workbook and then this module one which will contain our code. And it also opens the uh, code window over here for this module one. So basically this is where we'll put our code for the module. And you don't have to have this option explicit line. If you don't see this up here, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and delete it for now so it's not confusing. Uh, that's just a setting and we'll talk about that in another video. So the first thing I want to do uh, for my macro is I'm going to put a name on the macro. So when we start typing a macro, we always uh, start with the word sub. That stands for sub procedure. Then we'll uh, type a space and then the macro name. So this macro is going to be called first macro. And the macro name cannot have any blank spaces. So I'm going to use this underscore character instead of a blank space. Uh, then I'm just going to hit the enter key. And that's basically going to automatically uh, fill or end the macro here with this end subline so anything between those two lines will be the code that we're going to run in our macro it also adds these parentheses here uh, you can put arguments or parameters within these parentheses we're not going to do that now uh, but that's where you can put arguments for your macro 
So what are we actually doing when we're writing this macro? Well, for when we're writing macros and automating Excel, we're actually programming the objects within Excel. So I have a few slides here. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the Excel object model. And basically, you can think of everything in Excel as an object, the workbook, worksheets, charts, pivot tables, cells, everything in Excel is an object. And we're going to program these objects with VBA. So basically all the objects have properties and methods. This is a very important concept to remember and it's pretty simple. All you really need to remember is that we're programming objects and that all of those objects have properties and methods. So properties would just be the properties of these specific objects, maybe the width of a chart, the title, the count of the number of sheets in your workbook. And then they also, the objects also have methods, which you can think of as actions. So these would be actions you take in Excel when you press certain buttons, maybe like saving the workbook, copying and pasting a cell, selecting a sheet. Those kinds of things are the actions we take in, the work, in Excel. I like to use the uh, analogy of a kitchen and the objects in your kitchen uh, for this as well. I think it relates to how we program in VBA. Basically, if you think about all the objects in your kitchen, they all have properties and methods as well. So these would be the different methods or actions we take with these objects. And they also have certain properties uh, that we can either set or that we can uh, use to make decisions. So that's basically the b very core concepts of programming in VBA and programming Excel. So I just have this example of a banana. Uh, basically, we do three different things with those objects. We either read properties to make a decision, like is, in this case, is the banana ripe? Uh, we can also change properties. Maybe we want to take the peel off the banana, so that would be a property of a banana. And then we can take actions. We can eat the banana. So if that's a way to think about this and kind of narrow it down in just three of these core concepts of you have objects and we're going to program those objects uh, by changing their properties and taking actions with methods. All right, so let's actually start program programming our macro here. So I'm going to add a few lines down here. And I'm just going to write a few basic lines of code. You don't necessarily need to understand what all of these mean right away, but I'm just going to go through some common uh, references and some common objects that we would program in Excel. So the first one would be uh, the worksheets. I'm just going to type worksheets here. And then we can reference the worksheet. So maybe we want to reference uh, sheet two. We'll reference sheet two and say select. So that would select sheet two. We might also want to select a range within that sheet. So maybe we'll select, uh, we'll say range A3 here, we'll uh, dot select. And you can see as I start typing, uh, this IntelliSense dropdown comes up. So this is basically uh, when, we t when we reference an object, in this case here, I'm referencing the object, which would be cell A3 or the range A3. And then when I, after I type a dot, we're going to get all the properties and methods of that object. So you can see here, they're all listed in this dropdown. In this case, select is a method of uh, the, the range object. And you can tell that with this little green icon here to the left. So you see that little green icon there? That tells you that this is a method, uh, and, and it's a method specific to the range object here. These uh, icons that have this hand with a little card, that's a, a property. So that would be the property icon. So in this case, we're going to take the action to select uh, range A3. We can also change some of the values. So maybe in uh, range A1 or cell A1 here, we want to change the value. This would be a property. Uh, and we can set that equals to, in this case, we'll set it equals to the word hello. So basically here, uh, when we use the equal sign, that's telling a, a VBA to set the property of whatever range we're, spe or whatever object we're specifying here and the property of that object. So this would set cell A1 to the word hello. Uh, if we want to put in cell A2 here, we'll put uh, the number, we'll put a number. So this is going to be dot value. And then we'll say equals uh, 100. So numbers, you do not need to uh, wrap in quotations here, double quotes, uh, like you do with text. So text you wrap in double quotes, numbers you do not need to wrap in double quotes. So let's go ahead and run this macro so we can see how it works. First of all here, I'm just going to move the VB editor over a little bit. I also noticed that I need some additional sheets to make this work. So I'm going to put a few additional sheets in the workbook here. And then again, Alt F11 will jump me back to the VB editor. 
So when we want to run this macro, basically when we run it, it's going to run from top down. The macro just runs like you're reading a page in a book. It starts in the top and works it works its way down, and it only uh, reads uh, runs one line of code at a time. So only one line of code will be run at a time. You can press the run button right here, or the keyboard shortcut is F5, and that'll just run the entire macro. But you can also step through the macro, and this is really important when you're debugging and writing code, especially when you're learning. You might just want to step through each line and see what it does. So the keyboard shortcut for that is F8. F8 on the keyboard is basically going to start stepping us through the macro. So I pressed F8. You can see it's starting here at the first line of the macro. I'll hit F8 again. Now it's highlighted this line here. It has not yet run this line, not until we hit F8 again. It'll run that line and that's basically going to select sheet 2. So I'm going to hit F8 again. You can now see sheet 2 has been selected in my workbook here. And now if I run this line of code, that's just going to select cell A3. So now cell A3 has been selected there. So you can see how we're just stepping through it, only running uh, one line of code at a time. In this case, we're going to change the property of cell A1, the value property of cell A1. We're going to put the word hello in there. And then we'll hit F8 again, and that'll put the number 100 in cell A2. And then when I get to the end subline down here, I can just hit F8 again, and that'll end the macro. So as you can see, we're starting to program some of these objects in Excel. And like I mentioned with those slides, there's a ton of objects in Excel. And fortunately, they're all stored in a hierarchy. So they're all organized in a hierarchy. This is called uh, the Excel object hierarchy and the Excel object model. So the object model is basically just a library of all the objects. And they're kind of stored in this hierarchy, which makes them a little bit easier to find. So at the top of that hierarchy is the application. The word application just represents the Excel application, the application itself. And then below that, the application has a lot of members. So one of those members would be the workbooks. The workbooks are stored within the application, and you can reference those workbooks. This would be a collection of all the open workbooks on the computer. Within the workbooks, we, oops, within the workbooks, we have worksheets. Uh, so you can see how these worksheets would be stored within the workbooks. And then within the worksheets, we have ranges. So this can basically give you a visual of how this hierarchy works. We start at the very top with the application, and we work our way all the way down to whatever object it is that we want to change a property or run a method on. And we can also see this in VBA as well. So I'm going to bring the VBA editor back over here. And if basically here, if we just start typing the word application and then hit a dot, you'll see the IntelliSense dropdown comes up. And these are all the members of the application object. So everything, and you can see as I scroll down the list, there's a ton of them here. But these would be all the members of the application object. And as we saw in that slide there, the most common one that we work with is the workbooks object. So or the, in this case, this is a workbooks property. You can see the property icon there. And we can, if I then hit the tab key, that'll autofill that and put an open parentheses, then basically with this workbooks property, we can specify either an index number, the number of the workbook, or the name of the workbook. So in this case, we're working with my first macro. And we also, when we're referencing workbooks, we want to put the extension, so .xlsm, wrap it in double quotes. And then that would be the reference to this workbook we're currently working in. Now, if we hit a dot again, you'll see that we get all the properties and methods of the workbook object now. So this line of code here is returning the workbook object. And then when we hit that dot, we're going to get all the properties and methods of the workbook object. And another common one we work with uh, within workbooks is worksheets. So that's a very common one that we'll see. And I can just start typing worksheets, hit the tab key to autofill that. And then we can reference our worksheet as well. So I'll say sheet one like that. And then we can uh, reference ranges within the worksheet. So range will say a1, something like that, dot value, oops, dot value equals goodbye. So basically, this is considered a fully qualified line of code. And what this means is that we're referencing all the objects within our hierarchy here. We start with the application object, and we work with uh, reference all the objects all the way down to the object that we want to change. In this case, we want to change the value of cell A1. 
Now, when you're writing code and uh, in, when you copy code off the web and you see code off the web, you usually don't see uh, lines of code like this that are fully qualified, these giant lines of code. And that's because we don't necessarily need to reference all these uh, objects within the hierarchy when we're coding. As you saw up here, this line of code ran just fine. It set the cell or the value of cell A1 to uh, hello, and we didn't need to reference everything before that. But Excel and VBA do make some assumptions if you don't qualify your references. So basically, uh, when VBA reads this line, it makes the assumption that you're, you're referring to the active workbook and the active worksheet. So the active workbook would be the workbook that the user has open. Right now we have this My First Macro workbook open. So that would be our active workbook. And the active worksheet here would be sheet two. So when VBA sees this line of code, it's basically just going to assume you're talking about the active workbook and active worksheet if you don't reference it. So you don't necessarily need to select cells. Like you could see when we ran this code here, we didn't need to select cell A1 or select cell A2 before we changed the value. You don't necessarily need to do that in VBA. But this line of code, again, is going to uh, take this make the assumption that you're referring to the active workbook and the active worksheet so if you don't reference those uh, objects prior to whatever the range is then you either need to select it in a, in a line before or you'll need to uh, reference it right here that's the only way you can do that otherwise uh, VBA is going to make some assumptions and those assumptions can get you in trouble sometimes so that was an overview of writing our first macro and programming the objects in Excel. In the next video, we're going to write a macro that will create this summary report for all the worksheets in the workbook. Andy is excited, and I hope you are too. But first, I want to know what you think. Please leave a comment below with any questions and let me know what processes you want to automate in Excel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.